so many businesses are having such a hard time with employees now. They, you know, we hear about labor shortage. I, I don't believe that. There's not a labor shortage. The job you're offering is shit. You know, uh, like the job you're offering is who who would take that job? You know, uh, offer of course more pay. It all starts with more pay, of course, because life is getting more expensive. But they'll work harder. They'll want to keep their job. And if you're actually being nice to them, they, they won't resent you. They'll, they'll want to work for you. They'll want to keep working for you. Welcome to the Painter Growth Podcast, where we help you scale your painting company in record time. Join us as we explore sales, marketing, hiring, finances, leadership, and more. Everything that you need to know to scale and grow your painting business. I hope you enjoy and subscribe. What's up, everybody? Mike Gore-Hickman here, founder of PainterGrowth.com, and you're listening to the first episode of the Painter Growth Podcast we're recording in 2024. So happy new year. Welcome. Um, hope you guys are stoked for the year. Um, got a big year planned for the podcast, and, uh, and we're starting off with an old friend of mine, Mark Littre, out of Montreal, Canada, uh, owner and founder of M Painting. I've known him for about 10, 12 years. Um, we did some student painting back in the day together hung out in vegas partied a little bit and now mark runs a seven figure painting business in about six months of the year and then takes the other six months off and, and travels so i'm stoked to learn about that so what's up mark welcome to the podcast well thank you for having me it's uh, an honor to be with you you know you've always been a legend in my eyes in our college pro days so great to be on your podcast legend is a bit much but hey man i'll uh, i'll take it i guess um, but but thank you. So stoked that you're still in the painting industry because you were doing big things back back 10 years ago. So just just give a quick catch up. Like what what have you done in your painting business over the last 10 years or how has it evolved? Uh, well, I guess just like you, it started in painting because uh, there was this thing called Pro. It was uh, something to get introduced to business and painting happened to be the activity. So I rolled with it. After it, I kind of got away from it for a year or two, wasn't too sure what to do. And one day I just decided to start painting again, pretty much from scratch. And it took off pretty well. So grew bit by bit, uh, added different, uh, different sorts of work, different sorts of jobs. Taught a lot about how to run it and basically make this business uh, allow me to, to live my life the way I want to. And getting there pretty well now. So what made you decide that you wanted to run a business just for six months of the year instead of just running it year round? The main reason is that I don't like winter. Um, so I'd like to get away from the cold, spend some time in the, in the South. And uh, I really like the point of working mostly exterior because it has uh, guidelines to year year, you know, winter, which started actually this morning is to prepare for the summer uh, get work. So we're focusing only on booking. It also means that we start the summer with about half the work booked, not chasing work as we're producing uh, pretty much at the same pace. So we start summer with a, with a good chunk of work. As I said, there's winter to prepare, summer to do it, and there's a, a deadline at the end of the summer. So it makes us more efficient. Uh, it makes everything sort of like forced, forced urgency. Yeah, the forced urgency. There's no like, oh, maybe this more, that more. Like, no, weather catches up with us in October. We have to be done. And of course, we get a bit of uh, interior work from our exterior customers that we yep. usually would stay busy until Christmas. So yeah, that's mainly it, to be able to to spend time away and to have more uh, more structure instead of just being a business that goes on and on and on. We have phases to our year, and I like that. Yeah, well, there's, there's definitely some... Um, things that I want to dig into in that because, you know, some inherent challenges with like team and hiring and stuff that I want to talk about. Um, but just for, for context, what, you know, we just finished 2023. Um, what did your revenue shake up at? Like, what did you end up producing last year? Uh, I hit a million in revenue for the first time last year. Okay. So after taking a few years uh, easier, we had a, we had almost a million in 2020 and I took time to travel the world the following two years ran the business kind of on the back burner and then got back into it 2023 and yeah, kind of shut it down during reached. COVID and did it, did your own thing. Well, COVID was actually really good to us. You know, we spent two months in lockdown where I was really worried what was going to happen. But the, the day the 
the country reopened, it just started like crazy. We yeah, had more leads than we could handle. So that was a really good 2020 summer. And it made me, uh, made me rethink a lot of what I want to. And I kind of started back easier on a newer model, 21, 22, and then 23 uh, went uh, full send. Okay, nice. So million bucks. How was profit margins on that? About 25 to 30%. I still have to run the final accounting. Nice. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's solid. So I guess first thing that I want to dig into, like, you know, we can talk about marketing and getting the jobs and, and, and the, the model of like spending the winters booking exterior work is great, right? Because that, that allows you to really enter the summer with, you know, a full schedule. What do you, how do you run your team? Because it's all seasonal, seasonal workers. You have to rehire your whole crew at the start of every year. No. So basically this year, uh, for the past few years, I have the, the crew. They're from, uh, Let's just say they're from some another country, most of them. So they spend a lot of uh, the winter in their own countries. So they're they're cool with that, and it works for both of us. So in in, in the winter, a few of the guys are around, and we get we do get a little bit of interior work to keep them busy. But now I wanted to to grow more and to actually focus to focus just on exterior is something new for twenty twenty four. I was talking with a colleague not too long ago and she was like, oh, I hate this weather. I was like, yeah, I know me too. And I said to her, you know, I'm making a lot of effort to get work in the winter to keep you guys busy because I, I don't mind working harder summer. And she was like, you know what? Let, let's work harder next summer and take, take next winter off in a way. Great. Um, but then that was a challenge. Who's going to take a job for only six months of the year? Um, that was a concern. So what we're doing for 2024 is we're running a second branch, hoping to run another million dollar business with that in the, in the countryside, basically. And now we're north of here, which is a sick area. It's nice. It's in the mountains. It's also gold mine for exterior jobs, but it's hard to get people up there uh, since it's, it's in the countryside, you know? Uh, so what I've done is I've got a big cottage, uh, that will be able to host 10 to 12 people and we'll have the whole crew in there for five to six months of the summer. So you get a job for only six months, but you don't have rent to pay. You don't have food to cook. Everything's taken care for you and you work harder, make more money because more and more, you know, the economy is getting tough and a lot of people are having a tough time with a lot of stuff. So giving him a job that has other perks and where they can make the equivalent of some annual salary of other jobs in six months, uh, especially to me as a traveler, I've met a lot of such people. I think that's going to be really appealing to, to a lot of workers. So how do you, that's an interesting value proposition for a team. And I'm sure that like it completely blows away what most people have thought is possible with, you know, offering an employment situation. Cause you know, you have to find someone probably without a family who's just, a single person who wants to go do something like that and just work hard for six months and travel for another six months. So um, what types of uh, like, how, what have you found to be successful when it comes to recruiting these types of people? So of course this is a new, uh, new branch, but there's two main groups uh, here being in Quebec. Of course, there's always the, the language barrier. Uh, people need to speak French, but there's a lot of people from France who come to Canada on a, it's called a vacation work visa or I forgot the name. And a lot of these people look for actually these type of, of jobs. And I went to the, the job boards for these people. Most of them pay barely minimum wage. So, of course, can offer more. Most of them are looking for accommodation. Most of these mm -hmm. jobs would say, well, you get accommodation. You get minimum wage and that's it. You know, you come here to enjoy Canada. I want to give them an, an occasion to make more money while still enjoying so that would be a first group. The other group is uh, mostly travelers. You know, I've been traveling almost full time for three years now. And the amount of people I met that said, like, hey, do you know any place I could go? And I would be willing to work uh, just for they, they would be sometimes willing to work uh, for just a bed, you know, uh, especially in hotels, traveling. You have people who would do cleaning, like washing toilets all day for, for a bed at night. So uh, I got something much nicer for you. So a lot of people like to travel. Most jobs won't give you the time off you need to do that. So my viewing of that is if you like to travel, come work six months of the year for us with barely any expenses. 
and then spend the other six months traveling and come back next summer. You don't need to have a house. You don't need to pay rent and you, you get to, to enjoy yourself. That's pretty cool. It's like, it's like a, almost like setting up like a commune. <laughs> sort of. Yeah. Uh, the, the main point of that is uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, yeah. I'll probably have people who I relate to who will be able to, to, to do a lot of stuff. Of course, I'll have activities. It will be up north where there's so much stuff to do. It's just an hour from the city. Montreal's a cool city to visit, especially in the summer. So, and that's something I really need to make a priority to in that business. Like, of course, they need to make good money. It needs to be a good job, but it needs to be fun. Mm-hmm. Have you read the, have you ran the financials on, on supporting that many people's, um, oh. All makes sense. Yeah, all makes sense. Basically, uh, will be people will be paid a slightly less by the hour, but with a, a budget system, kind of what we did at College Pro, but tweaked a little bit. So if you basically, if you're a faster painter, you make more money by the hour, and basically the rent comes out to 150, 200 bucks a week per person, which is four or five bucks an hour. Yeah, which which makes sense, and. I'll have, uh, on top of that, one extra employee would be the cook, cleaner, uh, someone basically take care of the house. House manager. Yeah, house manager, basically. Yep. Uh, what I would like to find is maybe some some couple who would like to come for uh, the job. Let's say the guy wants to paint, the lady wants to cook and, and, uh, and clean, or the opposite, because that's another issue. There's a limited amount of bedrooms in the house. Mm. So that would be <laughs> yeah. two people for one bedroom. Uh, so there that's what I would love to do. Thinking outside the box. This is really cool. It's a very interesting business model. Um, one thing a lot of people would probably be interested in learning is like what, you know, you talk about this, you know, going up there, there's a lot of painting work, but getting a million dollars of work or whatever your goal is going to be, you're not really worried about how you're going to get the jobs. Of right? course, that's a challenge. That. That's, uh, that's the main thing of this model. It's like, everything has to work. I had to find a place first because there's no way I can do this without the place. And there's no way I can start booking and look for a place in March. They're, they're all going to be booked. You know, it's summer season. Uh, I found a really good deal. I met like through searching and searching ends up the guy's a friend of a friend. Didn't even know hustled to find someone. And then some nice cottage was just sold and the new guys like i'm not too sure what to do with it so if you want it for six months that would be great for me that would be great for me as well but now obviously i need the work uh yeah i need the good amount of work uh not too much but enough um and i need the people i'm not too worried about that even though it, it will be a challenge uh, but yeah i do need and then you'll need someone to own production like be the production manager yeah, I have a production manager already. Uh, we streamlined it pretty good. She worked part time all summer, and she's super stoked for that. So, I told her you can spend some time in the house up north, and you get to manage both branches. We have it pretty systemized, so she'll yeah. be able to run both. And it will be yeah, mostly marketing. I started already, tried a few things. I have the first uh, the first big job is already booked actually, so. It just came from a contact. Hey, I got this up north there. Could you do that? Like, actually, yes. And so that's our first job. Uh, I mean, up there. Out there, like with, with, with doing the exteriors of big cottages, you're probably looking like twelve to fifteen thousand dollar average job size. Maybe a little less. Uh, I'd say ten. So ten's a hundred jobs. Yeah. Um, need a hundred jobs. Uh, I've started looking in a few different avenues. I'll need signs and strategic spots. Uh, a lot of in, in the college pro days, actually, I worked a lot up there. We sent flyers through the mails and killed it. Back then, we lived in the suburbs. It was about a forty-five minute drive to get yeah. there, which is less than to go to the city. So it was it was good to do it with students for the summer. But we would get because there's no competition up there, basically. Yeah, you know, it's mostly jobbers. And I remember in the college pro days, I would. Every time I'd get a lead up there, I'd be driving and be like, well, this is a long drive. I better book this job. And I almost always did uh, because, well, there's not much competition. So yeah. now and, you have things like Google Maps and satellite views, and you probably do a lot of the estimating or ballparking virtually. You can't really in that area because a lot of houses are far from the road and you can't really see them on, on Google Maps. But yeah, mm -hmm. in this city, I do. That's... 
that's something I think about often. There's so much stuff we do now that was just, you know, in the college pro days, we'd leave our house in the morning and write with a pen and paper all the directions to every appointment you had for the day. Now <clears throat> they're noted in my calendar that I, I'll just pull up on my phone and input the address in the GPS, you know? Yeah. Um, so a lot of stuff. And of course, in the college pro days, we do all the quotes written down by hand. Now there are templates. I have templates for different types of jobs, a bit of modifications on each. Writing quote takes literally one minute. Yeah. Um, so yeah, technology does help a lot. So let's let's flip flip back to the business that you just finished running over this last mm -hmm. year, 2023. Um, what was the so let's start with like um, your preseason, you know, January till April. What were the main focuses during that time, or or were you even were you even in Canada during that time? I was actually in Nicaragua, uh, January, February, and half of March. But I, well, basically, I had an apartment. I was in a cool little village, uh, San Juan del Sur. For those of you who know where that is, it's such a nice place with a good vibe. I had an apartment just outside of town. Would basically lock myself all week and just work, mostly phone. Just uh, I'll get back to it in a minute. But uh, we mostly built a network of people who give us repeat jobs. I uh, would work all week, <clears throat> get out of the apartment Friday afternoon. Uh, it's a nice party town on the weekends. So have a lot of fun all weekend and then get back at it on Monday. Um, mostly worked. Uh, I had been working with these for maybe seven or eight years now, but a lot of property managers, especially in condo buildings. Because if you've been to Montreal, you've probably noticed that almost every building has these big metal staircases outside that need to be grinded and repainted every few years. So I started really going specific into those. And January, February, I basically called a million property managers, everyone I could find. And that's how I got started. It did start really slow. I, I got booked right now when I had April 1st last year. So, <coughs> excuse me, that was, uh, that was a, tough uh a tough curve to, to start last year and then it just exploded in april may because all these contacts you know they take a long time to move but once they do it, they would come one after the other well, this is really interesting because like one of the top strategies that i recommend is is calling property managers and realtors and builders and gcs and also you know niching down or niching down or whatever and picking like one specific service right so so you did that but you chose a, a unique service, which was, you know, you noticed in Montreal, there's all these metal staircases, they need to be painted. So you called property manager with a specific offer of painting that. So how did you come up with that strategy? And, and like, how did you, what was your, what was your workflow for actually getting a started, hold of uh, In 2016 or 17, I moved back to the city since uh, I moved to the city since I'm from the suburb. And I noticed that they're on literally every apartment building. And I went like, well, they're, they're everywhere and no one really does them because it's hard work. You know, I've done it myself a lot. I've had my fingers in the grinder before. I've had my knee on the grinder before. Uh, it does make a lot of blood, I'll tell you. Uh, and it hurts. Uh, so it basically takes a chunk of your skin off. So it's, it's hard work and it's with metal paint, which is very smelly, very thick. It will get everything dirty. So it's a, uh, it's not the most fun paint job to do. So no one would do it. I'm like, well, that's, that's how you you make money, you know, by doing stuff no one wants to do and was doing those. And then some property managers started calling me, hey, I manage buildings and I can't find anyone to do those jobs. Could you could you do it? Well, yeah, absolutely. And after a few called me, I was like, hey, hold on, like these property managers calling me, they can't be the only ones, you know. So I just literally went on Google and property managers and got every company there, there are literally so many so i just started calling them all and most of them be like oh cool cool i may not have anything right now like 90 percent of calls to a property manager goes the same like oh that's great i don't need anything right now but i'll keep you in mind great i'll call you next month and then you call him which a lot of people wouldn't do like oh i don't want to harass them no actually they're like oh you you remembered and you called me like i see i see you're on your game like yeah yes i am because that's another big point like i don't know out, out west but here the amount of leads i get and call back and people are like oh i called 10 painters and you're the first one to call me back actually so that that helped a lot 
And I built bit by bit with property managers. They're, you need to vet them. They're not all fun to work with. Uh, like in any business, some are good, some are bad. Uh, the good ones, the good ones enjoy working with good contractors. So we built great relationships actually with many of them. And now this year, I really like doubled down on it, uh, and that's what will enable me to do that second branch of the business up north because a lot of the work will just be coming back from these same people. I have so many leads already or jobs I quoted last year that didn't work out or because condos work with budgets, you know, and it's a democracy in there. So they decide, well, not now, but they need to do it. Uh, it's, it's not yet done, but it will down the road. And I'll probably be the only one hustling them until we get the job. So that's, that's good for us. Um, so it was bit by bit, you know, you, I guess you learn by doing, I tried something, something came back from it. Uh, I figured it could be good. I doubled down on it. And now this year it really went all the way on property managers and it, it paid off great. How do you stay organized when you're dealing with hundreds of property managers? I use a CRM uh, simply, you know, they're all input in there. I'll call one. Hey, Mike, uh, calling back with you. Do you need any painting? Uh, maybe I may have this building. We have the meeting on March 5th. Then I'll put a note in my CM for March 6th. Hey, and I'll call you back. Hey, Mike, uh, building at so-and-so address. Your meeting was last night, right? And they always go like, oh, well, I just took notes last time we spoke. And with a CRM, it's easy. We'll March 6th, let's say, we'll pop on my calendar, call back Mike. And, uh, and I do. And then if you tell me, oh, maybe not yet. Okay, can I call you in a month? April 6th, I'll put another note in my calendar. So a CRM really does help uh, a lot with that. Uh, there's no paper you're going to lose. There's no... See, I love that. See, most people, when they call property managers, maybe maybe there's a spreadsheet. And, and we have some spreadsheets and stuff that we, we share with our clients. Um, but I love the idea of using a CRM, right? It just makes so much more sense because these are leads and you need to treat them like leads. You can't just treat them like people in a phone book. Exactly. And they're, the point with any property manager, I work a little bit with general contractors too, but it's not my favorite. Um, painters need, tend to be the, the bottom of the food chain. Uh, you get hustled around, you get you get to a job site, oh, now you need to leave because the electrician's coming. It's like, no, that this doesn't work. Uh, and with property managers, the thing is, I know for sure you will need painting in the next year. There's no way you don't. You manage 20 buildings. Like, if every so what building... Do you, what do you say to the property manager that says, oh, we already have a painter? Um very few do actually. Uh, some will have a contractor. It's a matter of time before something may happen and you'll want to try another one. Um, very few, mostly the, so I stick with the condos because the ones who manage the, the rentals, they mostly have a painter on the payroll and they won't pay our prices anyways. Um, so I don't waste my time with those. Uh, with the condos, they, 99% of them would tell you like, oh, I actually don't need painting now. But whenever I do, it's always a pain to find one. So, and when they really do say, hey, I have one, I won't use you. Well, 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 okay. It's like with anything. Like if you tell me you don't want it, you know, I'll give you a call next year, obviously, just to to see if you, if you need it. But if you, basically with cold calling, uh, I guess we learned that at College Pro. I'll call you until you tell me to stop calling you. And surprisingly, I've not been told that many times in the past 10 to, this is year number 14, actually, uh, 2024. So, and I've not been told many times, stop calling me, you know? So until you do, I'll call you. And surprisingly, they, they appreciate when you call them over and over. Don't call them every day, obviously. Uh, but like once a month, I find is the sweet spot. Uh, I also make newsletter every month that I send to them. So it keeps, uh, keeps us, uh, on their mind. And yeah, basically you talked about if they have painters, most of them don't is what I would answer. Yeah. So if someone says no, you just add a reminder to call them back in like three months, six months or a year, just, just stick with yeah, it. Cause it's never no, no, you know, it's like not right now. 
uh, and that's what, and now I hired uh, this, this lady to, to handle those calls. And that's what I've uh, taught her the very first day is like, no, don't call me back. Almost never happens. It's not right now. Well, not right now means someday. It could be next week. It could be next year. It could be in six months, but a job's a job, you know. And do you share any uh, like printed material or emails or anything with them as well? Yeah, we have brochures them. that we basically the first time we call them, uh, we add them to the CRM. Then there's a button, email, send the uh, the brochure that explains the specific jobs we do for 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 them. There's the interior one, the exterior one, and the metal staircases one. Um, so every first call, they're like, "Oh, maybe not right now. Thanks for calling me. Well, listen, I'll send you my brochure." And uh, you keep it and I'll call you next month. And then we send them like right away while we're on the phone. That's another. We had to mail it before, you know, now it's like, well, I'll send it to you right now. You're in front of your computer. Did you get it? Because it's literally one button. You so, don't do uh, material anymore. I don't use any paper. I don't have a business card. I don't have paper contracts. I don't have any, any paper. Uh, that was also important for being able to run a lot of it at a distance because last winter I did most of these calls while I was in Nicaragua. I had a, a colleague that was on the ground here. His job was basically, it was, he was a friend that was out of work. So, and he knew painting good enough. You go see these jobs. Sometimes it's easy, get pictures, send them to me when it's harder. Tell me when you're going and we'll FaceTime while you're, you're on site. Um, and yeah, that was a big point. Like just, make sure because i don't need to go anywhere to see a job like a facetime call with a, a colleague will do a hey, show me this show me that and now i hired uh, my prod manager basically does that now uh, she goes and i told her your job is to of course give me the right info and if the client's present j j just be nice you know like you don't have don't don't hesitate to say i don't know mark will answer your questions i'll note them down uh, your job is to be nice. And most people will call me afterwards like, that girl is really cool. Yeah, she is. Uh, <laughs> so uh, that's her job. And it worked really well. Uh, I found her through friends of friends. I worked so hard to find someone. And one day she just sent me a long ass paragraph. I didn't know her. Hey, like, this is something I would love to do. Like, Awesome. Let's meet tomorrow. And we met and it was instantly uh instantly good and now we actually became friends uh which i always am careful with employees obviously uh, because we're working and yeah she visits visits potential job sites and visits our painters on the well does the, the prop management I'm calling the does clients. she still do does she do your estimates or do you have um no she doesn't do estimates she get someone else that does estimates yeah uh i do them uh i taught her basically what info do I need on a job? Pictures, measurements, counts, whatever. And this is what I need on a job. And when it's an, a harder one, we'll, we'll simply FaceTime. And I'll tell her, okay, take, take your tape out and measure this for me, please. And make sure to include this in the pictures. And the estimating is really the one thing I do. Especially in metal, it's hard to... Remember at college where we had this system, you know, with the hours and everything. It's a little harder with metal. There's a lot of like, I'm going to charge this much for that. Don't really ask me how I got there. Uh, I'm trying now actually to make a system out of it, but it's hard because they're all kind of all the same, but all unique. Uh, there's yeah. often some repairs to add and stuff. So I do most of them and most of the, the talking with the clients. It's usually one phone call. Okay, you need this. I'll send you my colleague. I'll call you back whatever after the day after she passes by and we'll go through the quote together. And of course, like you need to figure out how to bring on a general manager. Huh? It sounds like you need to figure out how to bring on a general manager. It's something I'll be working on. But on the other hand, I, I enjoy running it and I don't put that many hours in. So, you know, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm not yet there. Um, and I've been told I'm a control freak too. So I like to have my hands like, like with my prod manager, we, I used to get mad when I need to hold my prod manager's hands. Now, now I'm happy to do it because it's a five to 10 minute call every day. Okay. Today you need to get the colors from that customer. 
go see the guys on that job, make sure it's all going well, call that customer telling we're coming next week, go through all that takes five to 10 minutes. And I like it this way. I, I hired this girl that had no experience. I said to her, as long as you, as long as, as, long as you listen to me, everything's going to go fine. And she's, she's been great, honestly. Uh, I like that she had no experience. Like, hey, call that customer, tell him we're coming next week. You don't need an experience for that. You need to be good on your feet. You need to be good at talking with people. And, and she was. Yeah, you, uh, you're hiring for culture and attitude instead of absolutely. Uh, a specialized skill. Absolutely. And I look for specific things that would have on the surface nothing to do with painting. Um, like I hire mostly travelers. Uh, I travel a lot myself. It it makes you grow a lot. It puts you in a situation where you're you're on your own, man. You need to figure this out. And you're far, far away from home. You probably don't speak the language of people down there. Uh, it shapes you. And now more and more, I that's something I look for in people I hire. Uh, if you've traveled on your own for six months halfway across the world, especially as a, as a woman, uh, I already know a lot about you, you know, uh, because you weren't on yeah. the plane back home after a week. Yeah, it's almost like ingrained in like the culture of your business now. Yeah, absolutely. And I told her when I hired her, like the goal hiring you is that I can travel. Because if you're my eyes on the ground and we can just FaceTime and figure stuff out and I can trust you, then I can be anywhere in the world. Yeah. Because now so when you when you get when you get those jobs, those stair, those staircase jobs, mm -hmm. how do you land and expand those those relationships with the property managers? Because I imagine you want to get their other work too. You want to get their exterior repaint work, you want to get the interior stuff. How do you typically land and expand those those contracts or those relationships? I, it comes down to do some good work. You know, as I said earlier, most honestly, most contractors are terrible. Uh, they they don't return calls. They don't. They they'll get to a job, send guys one day, not come the next day. Oh, we had another job to do. Um, so do a good good job. I find that actually applying the paint well is such a small part of doing a good job. Obviously, it's non negotiable. It needs the job needs to look good, especially with metal because one drop of paint you you can't clean it. You know. Um, so make sure it's clean. Make sure we communicate well. They're condo buildings, you know. So sometimes there's a uh, hundred residents in there. We can't just call them at eight at night. Hey, we're showing up in the morning like that. That's not going to work. Uh, so good communication, good planning, and good then good execution, good follow up. That's that's mostly it because the property manager, most of them are really busy. They don't want to deal with you. Like they want the job to get done. And the way I often would sell is like, hey, I'll do part of your job for you you know like just get my quote to the board make it approved send me my deposit and i'll have it from there you meet a number of the guy in charge or the 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 building uh a janitor or something that can open us the doors or whatever because that's all we need it's all exterior and we'll handle it and that's what they appreciate and once we finish the job quickly done well done well communicated most of the time they'd be like oh uh, I got it. And they'll tell you before beforehand, you know, I'll give you one. If you please me, I have many more. I'm wishing you'll do a good job because I need someone to do it, you know. But you need to do a good job for that. Because then if you don't, they have their customers uh, complaining. So basically just provide good customer service, clear communication, and you, you'll already set yourself apart. And that tell you that it's stupidly easy. Someone calls you, pick up, or if you can't, call them back. If I tell you, Mike, I'm going to call you tomorrow, we have enough technology, there's, there's no excuse to, to forget about it, you know? Um, and just that has been so good for my business, you know, because just, just do what you say you're going to do. Put expectations, uh, prevent problems. Uh, I'd rather avoid a problem than being the best in the world at solving it. Uh, put expectations clear. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. We're not going to do this. We're not going to do that. If so-and-so happens, call me. Um, and that's it. You know, just uh, when you visit a job site, I'll send you a quote tomorrow. Well, it means I'll send you a quote tomorrow. 
And most of the time they go, oh, you actually did send it tomorrow. Well, that's what I told you I was going to do. Uh, <laughs> and I would often laugh when they call me or when I call them back, like, oh, thanks so much for calling me back. Well, you messaged me on my website saying like, hey, can I give you my money? Well, yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, and they'd often laugh and say, well, it seems like most people don't want our money. Um, like, I want a job. If you call me, Mike, and you say, hey, I got a house to paint, like, I want your job, you know? Unless what are you're, some the, what are some of the like tips, tricks, or systems that you use to stay accountable like that? Like, what do you, how do you like specifically? How do you remember to call everyone back? I mean, I have my own systems. Do you just use a Google Calendar? Do you use a CRM as well? Like, how, I use what a, do you, uh, you see on top of it? I use an Excel sheet with most of my stuff that I can just erase, copy, paste like every day. Here's who I need to call. I got the CRM as well, uh, and I go through this Google sheet and my CRM first thing in the morning every day. And I write it down. So I need to call these people today. Uh, I honestly don't think it's about a system or anything. It's about being accountable. You know, like there's, you're a business owner. There's, there's no excuse. You forget to call somebody like write it down. Obviously if I don't write it down, I'll forget. Like I'm pretty bad at remembering stuff, but write it down. And it does happen that I'll forget. I'll call you the next day and say, I'm sorry, you know, like th that's it. Um, no excuses is a, a big part of why I run this business. Same with my painters. Like, hey, this doesn't look good. Like, you need to do it again. Like, what, what, what can I tell you? Yeah. And sometimes they'll complain like, hey, like, what's up? Like, does this look good? No, it does not. So we need to redo it. There's no point of talking about it over and over. You you know why it doesn't look good. And, and it's the same to me with customers, uh, just do what you say you're gonna do. Uh, uh, yeah, I wouldn't even say there's a, there's a system because you can have the best system in the world. If you're not taking it seriously, it's not worth anything, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just like a little, like what I do, it's so easy, everyone has it, everyone has a phone, right? You can just like talk into it and say, hey, remind me tomorrow at 8 a.m., call this person. Mm -hmm. and then Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, and when someone calls you, oh, I didn't see your call bullshit. You know, like uh, my voicemail actually says, please don't leave me a voicemail. Send me a text message and I'll see your text. I'll leave it at, like that. And when I get home, I'll answer all my text messages. And that's it. You know, you have written records of what, what I've said to you. You know, like we, we've been texting. So, yeah, I find technology has made it so easy and i tell you that's something that's it's not hard it's not hard in the sense that it doesn't require any sort of skill or intelligence to just take it seriously like i guess that's that's the main point like i we have a lot of fun while working i i tend to be pretty laid back with people but we, we take this seriously you know like we we're doing good work and we're making sure everyone's happy like that's mm -hmm. that's what all my employees are told like the only thing that matters is that the client is happy yeah uh, absolutely because we will all be happy and also i tell clients i'm like how do you do it well i'm a little selfish i don't like problems and if i call you back and i keep you updated that avoids me some problems because you're not going to call me complaining you're going to be happy you're going to give me more work uh everything's going to be easier uh Follow-up call on the job will take one minute instead of you ranting at me for 30 minutes because you're pissed at the way we've handled it. So handling stuff like that actually makes my life easier. And that's that's why we're in business, you know, to so I'm able to enjoy my life. So now going back to production from this year, mm -hmm. right? So you completed the year just above a million bucks. So that means you're you know, over the only running six months of the year or so, you're about 160,000 a month or something. Like uh, that. Yeah, give or take. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, 30, 50 grand a week. Yeah. How many painters did you, did you have on average to produce well, that? I'd say average 12, um, 12 for that. And then I look back and I was like, that seems like a lot. And if you have 12 rock star painters, you can produce so, so much. Yeah. Like a good, good painter that doesn't take time off, well, takes weekends off, obviously, but that works big days, could produce 10 grand a week. 
So 12, yeah. let me pull my phone out to calculate this quickly. 12 painters, so that's 120 grand times, let's say four weeks a month. That could be 500 grand a month times six months. That's 3 million. Yeah. So with 12, really yeah. yeah, obviously 12, uh, 10 grand per painter per week. Like it's possible, but that's a really good painter. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. On average, we say like, between 12 and 15 a month is kind of like the, the industry benchmark. That's pretty much what it would come out to with a no, 15,000 per month per painter. And you're saying, 10, yeah, 000. I mean this summer, a million with 12 painters, that's about what it comes out to. Yeah. Yeah. What's your charge rate on that on average? Um, we don't run it by the hour, but now, now I will for the jobs up there, uh, per budget hour, I count just under a hundred bucks now. Yeah. Uh, which, which is insane. Like, yeah, I drove by uh, when I was a college pro, my first like nice job, the first like big job was to paint the whole exterior of a house it was five grand. I was of course losing it back then, you know, and I drove by that house not too long ago. Still looks good. 12 or 13 years later. And I looked at it like I charged 12 or 13 grand for this now. And I didn't up my prices actually, you know, I just, up with the, the 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 costs we have, you know, yeah. Pain. Inflation and labor. They tell us don't buy sure sure in duration. It's too easy. It's too expensive. It's now thirty bucks a gallon. It's like seventy now at our uh, for the exterior one at our contractor pricing. It's the same exact paint, um, maybe a little less than that, but still, it's at least double. Yeah. Uh, and back then, our my first. Uh, coach at college was going crazy over it like you can't buy that that's too expensive so what did you what did you, how did you run your crews did you have like four crews of three or three crews of four uh we we did with three crews and we'd move guys around sometimes i'd have six guys on one job and two on another job depending on the size yeah. but what i also liked with these uh, metal jobs is that they were like 10 grand would be the average uh but i'd say 80 percent of jobs were between 8 and 15 grand so that would be, I would expect that job be like four, sometimes five guys done in a week. So we, we'd always go with three jobs uh, at the same time because uh, I told you my, my guys are, uh, are from, they're, they're Dominicans actually. And a bunch of them spoke only Spanish. So I had three main guys. They're three brothers actually. They're my three like crew leaders. So I was like, well, you three brothers never work together because I need one of you on each job because you're, the experienced ones and you you speak all right french and english so you can talk with the customers and they're honestly so nice the main comment they get from customers your guys are so cool yeah they are uh you know they're they're dominicans like they're they're from a festive place like they yeah uh they 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 put music on and they sing and dance while working which if you ask me i tell you Ooh, make sure that's okay with the customer both customers like most customers love it so yeah. uh and so, yeah, I have one job with each. My prop manager would visit each job, let's say three, four times a week, not necessarily every day because sometimes they're spread out across the city. It would be a pain to visit all three in the same day. And that's, that's pretty much it. You know, clear expectations. You have a contract. Here's what you need to do. You finish this job and then you start the next one. How do you get or how do you build up to that level of pr productivity with your painters? Like rather than just getting the guys who are, you know, clocking in, clocking out eight hours a day, finishing eight hours of budgeted work, you know, how do you, how do you get people that productive where they can get to like 10,000 a week per painter? That will be with uh, more, actually more, more systemizing because now it's mostly, uh, I work with subcontractor. He gets a percentage of the job. I have one, it's basically one subcontractor running all these guys and he's the one running them because he's, hiring mostly guys he knows. So I'm talking to him like, and he knows, you know, we've been working together for a couple of years. This needs to get done. And he's the one like whipping his guys or whatever. Uh, now with, that's also what I like of having everybody hosted in a, in a house and having more like typical uh, residential jobs. Here's how much time you have. And you're leaving from the house. You're coming back to the house. All materials get delivered to the house. There's no wasting time going to the, job, uh, the to the paint store. There's no you can't go out for lunch anyways out there. It will take half the day. You know you're 30 minutes from the the closest store sometimes when you're working. So we'll have a cook that will pack you a lunch. 
So you remove all the two main time wasters, basically going to the paint store and going for lunch. And we'll have someone visiting you every day, keeping you accountable and showing you actually, because now there's subcontractors. Now those are going to be employees. Look, if you do this faster, this is how much money you're going to make. And everybody wins. And you, well, you've had it running a paint, student painting business. You know, sometimes guys would be like, oh, we're done. It's five o'clock. You could have stayed an hour or two more and finished the job. But now you wrapped everything up. You need to take everything out again in the morning. You just had four or five hours tomorrow instead of one or two hours tonight. And you're actually paid the same in the end. And then you can start another job and get paid more. So keeping guys uh, accountable and telling telling guys basically this is how the job is calculated. This is the time you have to do this, this, and that. If you took longer, well, which part took longer? You, you know how much time everything should take. Um, so yeah, I believe just uh, expectations and transparency. Uh, when you interview, do you interview for financial motivation? Because that's kind of like a key, a key part there. Yeah, it's something I find hard, you know, because it's the kind of question that is easy to lie if you're, if you're the one being interviewed. Mm -hmm. um, I always try to find for, for character, you know, for what hardships have you had? What, what have you been through? What, uh, uh, I like to run most of my interviews not actually talking about painting. Like, who, who are you as a person? Like, can I trust you? Have you, have you done stuff in your life? Have you, uh, and listen for the, the subtle parts, you know, like what, what are you not telling me here? Um, why, why are you not at this job anymore? You know, was it because you, you got fired because you did something? Was it because you actually didn't enjoy the way it was going and try to figure out also what, what, what makes you, uh, what makes you happy? How, because every person is different, you know, how do I need to treat you? That's something I'm really, you know, a lot of business owners, I'm talking to friends sometimes, like, I can't believe that's how you run your business. Uh, paying your people as little as possible, hustling them always. Like, no, like, that's not how. Even though it could mean I leave some profit on the table, my people are happy. They're not screwing me. They're not uh, screwing the job. They're being nice to customers. So, like, I try to remember the jobs I had when I was younger. And I had many of course, I was not the easiest employee, uh, but I've had many bosses that I really didn't like. And I try to remember that, you know, that's uh, I worked in restaurants a lot before getting into painting. Like if you've worked in restaurants before, you probably know how it goes. Uh, basically, people scream at each other. That's that's how it goes. And it's so counterproductive that that's not how I want to run my business, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm pretty much unemployable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same. <laughs> uh, no, you're absolutely right. I don't think that's even classified as like leaving money on the table, but it's like, you know, operated people, people centric business, take care of your people and they'll take care of you. That's, that's what it's all it about. back to you in the end, you know, um, mm -hmm. would need to run the study somehow, but pay someone 50% more. I'm pretty sure there'll be, they'll give you more than 50% more, you know, because so many businesses are having such a hard time with employees now. They, you know, we hear about labor shortage. I, I don't believe that. There's not a labor shortage. The job you're offering is shit. You know, uh, like the job you're offering is who, who would take that job? You know, uh, offer, of course, more pay. It all starts with more pay, of course, because life is getting more expensive. But they'll work harder, they'll want to keep their job. And if you're actually being nice to them, they, they won't resent you. They'll, they'll want to work for you. They'll want to keep working for you. So that's that's basically how I do it, being you, human with my guys, basically. Yeah. I love it, man. Well, um, you've sure grown, changed a lot since I've known you, knew you 10 years ago. And uh, yeah, man, congratulations on the business and, and the travel. It looks yeah. like you're living your best life. Absolutely. Uh, that's... Uh, that's what I want, you know, uh, do whatever I want to do, be free. Uh, of course, earn enough money to do it. Uh, I guess 
COVID really opened my eyes with that, you know, uh, being stuck at home for months, uh, not able to do a lot of stuff. Uh, not sure if the world's going to end or something. Um, and it made me really think about what I want. And that's when at the end of the first COVID year, I just sold everything I had and moved to a backpack. Uh, now I have a place again for the first time in three years. Uh, mm. That's new. <laughs> um, and I, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. And it made me realize what I want, what I don't want. Uh, saw places, saw different people, saw different cultures. And, you know, for a long time, I was looking at what can I do that would enable me to travel? You know, what, what kind of business could I do? But I didn't want to do another drop shipping store or whatever, or send some gimmick on the internet just because it works and find it. I wanted to run an actual business. And then with COVID, I realized I can actually just keep doing painting uh, by giving it some tweaks. And that would be, that would be it, you know? Mm -hmm. And I guess you had that realization too, that the older you get, the less it makes sense to go into a new industry, you know, uh, that's 14 years painting, like to have the knowledge I have now in another industry would take 14 years. I'd be it's hard to start over, 40s, you know, uh, I'd be, uh, you know, uh, it's, <laughs> it, it would be, it's, it could be fun, but I mean, it's, I feel like it would be a waste of all these years because it's there's a lot of stuff I can do now. Like, Oh, wish I knew that back then. No, that's the point of experience. You didn't know that back then. You know, the cool thing that I like about your story so far is that you took something that you knew, which was painting and you figured out how to restructure it to fit basically your dream life where you got to travel three to six months a year and still make a quarter million dollars in profit. Like that's, that's, that's super cool. And I look at, you know, friends who are hustling in the corporate life, like some of them seem to be enjoying it, but a lot of them like, you, you couldn't pay me enough to do that, you know, uh, especially the freedom. And yeah, we, I guess we are used with College Pro 2 to make a good living at a young age. And you, you, you don't want to start over. You, you don't want to, yeah. yeah, I'm doing well. Uh, I'm 30 years old. Uh, I haven't been to school really. I do painting, I work half the year and I make a good living. Like what, what else could I ask for? Uh, just keep growing step by step. And well, same to you. Uh, we haven't been in contact too much the past years, but you, you're a father now. Uh, you, you run this, uh, this cool business, I guess, same, same to you. you you took something you probably just like me was, uh, kind of happened to fall in because Hey, that cultural thing looks fun. Oh, seems like I'm going to be learning about painting. Um, and you just kept with it, you know, uh, yeah. all these years. Well, I, yeah, I left, I left it for a few years. I left painting for about mm -hmm. seven years and, uh, it called me back. back. Yeah. Uh, it's same. I left it for a while. I, I ran it backwards for a while. I was like, oh, I'll do it because well, need to be working obviously. Um, and I'll find something else. And it was always, I figured out every time I got mad at it, it was my fault, you know? Oh, this is not going well. Yeah, because I didn't take care of it enough, you know? Um, so when you, and by systemizing it, by doing the same thing over and over, you do it well once, you work less hours, you work less months of the year, and it just works better. I find that I work less and less, and it works better and better. I guess that's that's experience. That's it, man. Well, Mark, thanks for coming on today, man. I appreciate your conversation. And uh, I look forward to seeing what you uh, what you accomplish this year. I think it's going to be big. I'm really excited for 2024. Thanks so much for having me. That was fun. Good catching up with you again. And uh, I can't wait to see uh, what, the, what the podcast is going to look like in the end. Yeah, sounds good. We'll, we'll, we'll get some social posts over to you to share out. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. And talk to you soon. And uh, happy new year to you and your family. And best of luck in your business. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate it, man. All right. Goodbye. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Painter Growth Podcast. If you want to grow your painting business, go to www.paintergrowth.com or click on the top link in the description. Talk soon.